and welcome to the Movie Section Show. My name is Fariba and today I'll be doing my movie review on Damon Chazelle's Babylon. So this movie just came out a couple weeks ago or just about a week and a half ago and I think we all know that this is a film where it really is all about just Hollywood, just the, you know, the appreciation of Hollywood and cinema in general. Uh, this is something that I'm, of course, I'm not too, you know, I'm not too surprised about because Damon Chazelle is typically a uther who loves to kind of celebrate the artsiness of, of art, right? And then he tries to translate it into like cinema. We've seen that with Whiplash where he basically celebrates jazz, but doing it in a way that shows sort of the obstacles of like a character and how they try to, you know, and trying to focus on the dynamics of that. And the second film, of course, I think the one that really is kind of the clear case of, you know, Hollywood film is La La Land. Um, I mean, this is a film where, again, it's all about celebrating Hollywood, but doing some way of just showing the dreams of it, but also showing how, like, with the dreams, not everything comes true, of course, which I'll discuss about more in a second. And the, again, I, I think the one that's definitely kind of really different from everyone else is First Man. First Man was actually more focused on, you know, Buzz Aldrin, sort of his life, just the things that he had to go through, some of the losses, some of the failures, and just eventually that that you know that success that he does find with his you know with his you know with his moon expedition only to kind of show that you know there is a deep per there's a deep thing about him inside him where it's like okay well there it just a lot of to comprehend in terms of like the emotionality of like you know everything that happened and just the feelings of that and in this film this is a film that if you didn't really get the gist of from the trailer it's all about talking just kind of showing this transition from the sign era to the sound era um just showing like the ups and downs of it and we focus on particularly three main characters that are played by brad pitt uh margot robbie and diego calva and we just kind of follow them and see how this movie you know flows through and just seeing how you know the silent era takes a toll on each of these characters and what this means in terms of cinema right so uh, that being said, right, I think that when we look into more of the technical aspects of this film, I mean, without a doubt, I think this film I have a lot of mixed reactions to. I think that has been the general consensus with this film so far. I think even when the reviews were dropping, like, a lot, there was just a lot of mixed reactions to this film just because there's some things that worked, some things that didn't work. And once I watched it myself, I definitely felt like, I agreed with a lot of the, you know, criticisms as well as some of the more phrases of what this film does in terms of like what it tries to do. So for one part, the performances are great. I think that's just a big thing to kind of mention about because I think each actor does a great job of just trying to portray their characters, whether it be um, Brad Pitt, Marco Robbie, or David Calva. I think David Calva does a really great job with the character that he's playing and just showing sort of how he is trying how he's sort of living his dream but also seeing the consequences of everything that happens right and i think that's a big part of what this whole film is about right and i think that each actor does a great job of it just just really conveying their characters into this film and just their downfalls as well as their their ups and downs right but now going to just more of the technical aspects again i think this film does a beautiful job with showing the beauty of cinema right i mean it's so over the top it's so over stuff I mean, the beginning of the film starts off with the with the party that we see from the trailer, um, where everyone is just having the time of their life. Everything's so extravagant. Everything's so literary. Everything's so like, it's just. I think I guess you can say, repuntious. I guess you can say. Um, yeah, it, it's just the moment you start getting into the first moments of the film, like you you'll know right away that wow, this is going to really take you into a roller coaster ride that's basically what it was and um yeah it started off with a really nice roller coaster um it, things again the whole party scene was really phenomenal i mean again it's just so bizarre and so crazy and it's done in a way that it's supposed to be doing that because again it shows sort of this whole aspect of cinema and just how it is so voluptuous and all that sort of stuff right and it's just how the beauty of everything that we see whatever we like the behind the scenes or are on the screens of cinema, right? And again, this is a film that is really about dedicating itself to just the beauty of cinema or just kind of analyzing cinema itself, which I'll discuss more in a second, but but we see again with the cinematography, it's just it's just beautiful. It's great. We see a lot I think the music, it's it's one of the big points of this film. I think the music is probably one of the most memorable things about this film. That's probably one of my give my takeaways of this film is that, you know, my positive takeaways is that 
the score and the cinematography are just beautiful. I think the technical aspects of this film is really top notch. It does a really great job of just, you know, showing the extravagance of everything. And again, just because this is a film that is dedicated to, you know, cinema and just celebrating about it that in doing so, the best way to do it is just to really overstuff it, trying to be over the top, trying to be extravagant, trying to, you know, take everything pretty much to a whole new level of like craziness that 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 this is what I think Chazelle does a great job of doing exactly that. But and I think that's just about I think that's some of the great things about this film technically. I think that when we go into the war season, I definitely could see a lot of accolades being given to this film in terms of the technical aspects of it because again the cinematography is great the music is amazing i mean again when it comes to damon chazelle he loves his jazz music we've seen that with flash we've seen that in la la land and we see that here in babylon so uh, and, and i think the jazz really really sticks out and i think that's where i think you know it's probably going to be the more defining parts of this film where the music is just amazing like i, I think and, and you see that from some with one character but and I'll talk about that more in a second, but I think that's one of the big aspects of the technical aspect has really been top notch on this film. Like he really goes into the details of the technical aspects, whether it be the camera work, the music, or just, you know, the execution, everything, right? Now, I think more of my problems with, I think when it comes to the problems of this film, I think it really goes down to the story itself. I think that's where we really start to see a lot of the problems with the story and the execution, the pacing. Um, so let's go dive into that because I think that's where I really want to discuss about. So when it comes to this film, right, I think a lot of people will agree that this is a film that is dedicated for film nerds or for, you know, for film lovers. For anybody who really enjoys, you know, looking into just the beauty of cinema, whether it be the, you know, the the rise or downfall of anything or whether it be from looking through the characters, right? And I think that we don't exactly get to that message until the end of the film where the whole, you know, purpose of this film, the whole message of this film is just sort of celebrating cinema and both the rise and fall of it whether it be transitioning from silent film to sound from monochrome to technicolor that was a big part of like i didn't i didn't really take away until until you get to the finale where you get to the ending of it and realize that okay well the whole point of this film is just to celebrate it and this is kind of just a manifestation of what uh, Damien Chazelle was trying to allude to in terms of what this film is about, which is again, it's like it's almost like an whole analysis of a cinema and doing so in a way of depicting that on the big screen, and that's what Damien Chazelle does in terms of this film. Like the whole concept of it, it's just about analyzing as well as showing the beauty of cinema and how it has changed throughout the years and throughout the era, right? And I think that was kind of what Chazelle was trying to allude as its message towards and showing again the the rise and fall the the downfalls and as well as like the things that do work out for it. and just again just showing how this is sort of, sort of a theme that repeats itself in a way when there is a major change in terms of cinema and that is sort of what you know Chazelle is trying to convey and at least one part of it like the earliest parts of you know cinema which is again the silent era and that's what we see from this film now in terms of just doing that though i think again i think when it comes to chazelle like because he is so focused on trying to show the technical prestige of this film whether it be the cinematography the music right i mean those are the big parts of what makes a what makes a movie beautiful right when it comes to this film is that chazelle really puts in a lot of work into the technical aspect of right of, the, of that of like the film like i mean that's what this film is about like when we look into cinema we have to look at just kind of how things have changed technically whether it be change of sound whether it be change of color whether it be change of the visuals whether it be you know how things have you know have improved have enhanced since you know going to things like imax or dolby i think that's sort of what Michelle is trying to show in this film it's just the how change is always kind of inedible and that was itself like i as i mentioned before is that when you go into this film there's i think because damien Chazelle is so focused on trying to give this analysis of cinema i think this is basically what it is it's based on analysis of cinema trying to show the changes that i've undergone with cinema throughout the years or at least in just one section of you know one section of history of cinema right in doing so he kind of does sacrifice just trying to give a very cohesive storytelling for each of the big characters right like i think as i mentioned before the three big characters are uh jack conrad nelly and manny torres 
which are played by Brad Pitt, uh, Margot Robbie, and Diego Calva, respectively. Um, that these these are the characters that we are focusing on, and these are the characters that we should be, you know, looking into just kind of how they're kind of transitioning from the silent era to sound era. And in a sense, it does kind of give, it does work in a way that it does give us, you know, it, it does it does give us the answer to it. But in terms of just the execution, you can see how things were not as you know well done especially with brad pitt's character and margot robbie's character because what we see with margot robbie we see the rise of her character right as the sun era is about to kind of reach not just its peak but just sort of its end and see how because of the sound era how we kind of go into the sound era like things are just not you know she's not able to adapt to sort of that change i think the big part of that is that you know we are changing from one aspect to another trying to adapt to like a whole new sort of technological revolution it can be hard for these actors or even for the filmmakers involved that you know can they adapt and we can see that for a lot of the actors they do struggle with that and that's something that does we do see uh visually happening on the big screen it is illustrated you know it, it's it's basically there like we can tell by it but i think that when you have so many characters like brad pitt's character and Marvel's character and Diego's character, there you can definitely say that there is kind of this inconsistency in the storytelling. I think that's the big, big issue with this with this film is that with so many characters as well as this message that you're trying to convey that there's this imbalance of just trying to reach sort of that that end game for each of the characters, and it just makes it harder to really relate to some of them. I think that's where I felt like I had a problem with this film is that. I just wasn't really able to kind of connect with the characters because of how things were not pacing too well, as well as just kind of give us the illusion of some things, but not really just giving us an idea of it. And I, and I think by the time we do get to the end of the film and start to realize what's really uncovering, that it's kind of like, okay, well, that's, I guess that makes it really sad, but also it's really hard to really understand sort of this depth of it because there wasn't really that depth of these characters that I would have wanted to see like in the middle part of the film, I think that's where we kind of see a lot of the big issues or at least I saw the big issues of it. I think the middle part of the film is where it kind of really drags a little bit and in doing so, a lot of the character development just really gets lost. Um, especially again with the main characters. And I'm also going to talk about some of the side characters in a second, but with the main characters, like even though they're supposed to be the big characters, yet they're not really getting the spotlight that they should be getting to the point where us audience members should be able to you know understand them trying to you know empathize with them and i feel like that's kind of where it gets a bit lost in this film where it's like well by the time you do get to the end it's like well okay whatever and it, again i think and i'll talk about the ending in a second but but yeah that was the issue that i had with it on top of that um i think the bigger issue is some like side characters that we do get like i there's one character by um crap there's a there's one black character we do see who is like you know kind of the rising star of like trying to you know put more of the uh you know people of color uh entertainers to really start shining into the you know into the industry and i feel like his character i think it was sydney palmer sorry it was sydney palmer the character's name is sydney palmer and i felt like as a character that is sort of the side character but sort of also kind of showing himself as somebody who is about to rise in a way and trying to change sort of the industry in a sense as well as cinema and how they're trying to you know improve upon things like i felt like his story definitely kind of faltered a little bit like it felt as if it was too much in the background where it made it harder to really focus on him or it's like okay well i'm going through so many characters oh wait he starts to pop up out of nowhere again and it's just like okay well that's where i really start to see the issues it's just a lot of these inconsistencies same thing with uh crap i can't remember there was one character he was like a columnist and i totally forgot the actress's name i'll probably remember it later on because uh, gene smart's character there you go gene smart's character like again another character who kind of suffers a similar fate as sydney palmer's sydney palmer where gene smart's character is like a columnist right like kind of like a pre hedda halper type of you know or like a pre entertainment journalism in the silent era and it's like okay well it's great seeing her but i felt like again she was kind of put into a secondary character who really didn't really serve much of a purpose aside from just kind of the ending of it of like again just showing just the realities of things and i feel like 
she would have been such a great character if the writing would have been a lot better in terms of like the character itself like even though we do have sad characters sometimes in terms of just trying to focus on the main characters you do have to sacrifice the side characters and kind of just their own thing but i felt like this film really needed just to elevate the side characters a little bit just because they kind of felt too much in the shadows where it's like one all of a sudden when they do sort of pop up it's like okay well it, it kind of feels like a bit not forced but it just kind of feels a bit inconsistent i think that's the best way to say is that it's very inconsistent with a lot of that's going on with the character development the character arcs the characters that we do see in this film because i mean again the whole point of what chazelle's trying to do is convey just sort of the beauty of cinema right and and in this case right he does this in showing how like in the end of the film like it's revealed that like you know the inspiration behind the whole babylon movie is basically seeing in the rain we actually do get an illusion of this early in the film but we don't really you know understand that this is what this film is about until we get to the end of it where it's like the character sees singing the rain in theaters and showing how well you know this whole film seeing the rain is basically is based on inspiration of babylon and babylon is kind of just a manifestation of cinema and just how things have changed um and using a very popular story a popular film to kind of allude to all of that right it kind of feels like it, it things get really incohesive and in trying to do that right because he has one goal in terms of this film while as in doing so he sacrifices a lot of the character development i think that's where we start to see a lot of the problems again like it makes it harder to really you know relate to the characters it makes it harder to kind of you know understand the motivations and just kind of like again when it comes to like the final outcome kind of just like their fate by the end of the film i mean yes yeah, it's pretty predictable it's kind of like again an illusion of just like what would happen when you go through a whole new phase of cinema and how it's like if you can adapt then you're just going to be a you know like a, a once a one-off actor or not really one-off actor but a has-been actor right there you go has-been actor and i think that's kind of what we see from this like well that's just a big thing that we see with jack conrad's character and we do get i think and inside of the fact that there is some issues with the character development and just sort of this inconsistency i will give creds to just sort of the dialogue of everything because i think that i think the one big aspect of it is that because of the way cinema changes it comes to the realization of like okay well when we do have this change what does this mean for the people involved in the industry right and i think that one thing i did i think there's one memorable scene that we have with gene smart and brad pitt's character jack and they come together and jack's character is basically at his like low point of his career basically and gene smart basically tells him that well this is a big this is what it is like if this, we're at the top and then eventually i don't know we become a has-been and so and, and it's not just like it happens in one era it happens so many times especially when there's a huge transition from one period of cinema to another whether it be the changes of like the technical aspects or the sound or whatnot right and i think with gene, gene smart's character she's accepted that that this is kind of a, it's, this is like a circle this is like a cycle that happens no matter what this is going to happen with whether it be columnists, whether it be anybody who's a journalism, anybody who is, you know, an actor, anybody who's a director, this is going to be the cycle of it. And I think, I think that was definitely a, a really harsh reality of it, but also very, you know, again, this is the reality, this is the truth of it. I think that was definitely a big eye opener. And I feel like that was one of, definitely one of the more defining scenes that I think may have redeemed aspects of this film and like kind of the message of it because again the whole point of this film is just again an analysis of cinema and showing again the rise and fall and just sort of the bad and the good of like how cinema has changed and that was sort of just an illusion of like one of the more unsettling things about cinema which is that well yeah because the only reason you're has been because this is a cycle of it and that once you go through and once this happens it's not just you it's going to happen to everybody until there is a point in time where somebody can you know really resolve that and i feel like that was kind of again just sort of an illusion to sort of i guess our generation how we're a bit more you know we're a bit more aware of like kind of the issues that we see in hollywood whether it be ageism whether it be colorism whether it be sort of just the stories that are being portrayed on the big screen and that's i guess that was kind of the illusion to that and that's what she means herself was just you know trying to allude to that that message that well this is the issues that we've seen in his in, in in the cinema you know the history of cinema and yet there's also beauty that comes out of it because of how things do evolve 
as a result of you know the changes that we see as well as seeing kind of how it's not you know roses and daisies for everyone else all the time and i think that was kind of the illusion of what this film is about i think there was again a really great message that was you know a really analytical message of the history of cinema right i think this is kind of almost like i guess you can say like a thesis <laughs> by um by damien chazelle and how he wants to sort of talk about just how how cinema has changed and how oh god and sort of how there's a there's a good and a bad to everything but also kind of like again because of doing so he did sacrifice the characters that really i felt like needed to be a bit more consistent needed to be a bit more improved and sort of just the development of it because again i felt like we we're kind of just jumping around a lot of the characters without really understanding who they are what they're doing what they're dealing with um and again and in a way that like we can't really you know you know we can't really empathize them i think the only character i actually ended up empathizing the most was maybe manny and as well as sydney and i think that was those are the two characters i think you can even add um the one asian character i can't remember her name but who was basically like an anime wong a, a, you know basically like an inspiration of anime wong but yeah in terms of the story again like when you look into this film this is kind of i guess you can say it's like a baby of once upon a time in hollywood uh great gatsby and i guess you can say uh there's one more film but i i want to say la la land but oh wolf of wall street there you go wolf of wall street i mean again you have like the over stuffiness you have over top just sort of this you know extravagance that we see from wolf of wall street kind of induces this film as well as just sort of sort of showing the realities and just like you know the things that you know people in hollywood have to go through that we saw again in once upon a time in hollywood like i think when you look at jack conrad you really think about rick dalton a lot um, I, I i was really thinking about like every time i saw jack conrad i was like as you see his story i was like wow this is kind of like reminiscent of rick dalton from once upon a time in hollywood which again also starred brad pitt um and it's like okay this is fine and all and i feel like i, I just feel like in that case once upon a time in hollywood does a better job at that because we kind of see sort of like this depth of this character and how he's dealing with just sort of his down not just downfall but kind of how he's no longer the big star of hollywood and how he either needs to you know accept it and try to move on from it and then just you know that was it for him whereas in this character again like we see him we see him kind of trying to do things but it doesn't go into the depths of it and i felt like that's kind of where i would have wanted to see a bit more of the psyche of like all these characters just to like understand the motivations and let their stories be a bit more consistent as well as their character development which i felt like that was where it lacked a lot of in this film because again the wishes all was trying to you know execute the story again it's supposed to be like a love letter to cinema in a sense not a love letter but it's almost like an analysis and a thesis of cinema but in doing so sacrificing like the big aspect of this film which is again the characters themselves and that really kind of hurt aspects of like this film and again this is a three hour film let me just remind you this is a three hour film and it's a three hour film where you know Damon Chazelle could have had used a lot of that time to you know not just do the one aspect where he's trying to you know convey this message but also trying to do so in a way that the characters are consistent but he doesn't really do that and I think that's where we see the problems of it and if in that case if that was the you know that was going to be you know the whole thing of, and you know his old way of doing it i think that the runtime doesn't really justify just the whole you know the story of it except i think that this movie could have been like at least 30 minutes shorter because this is a three hour film this is a three hour and i believe 10 minute film actually and even by the end of the film like even with everything that happens with the extravagance and just how over the top it is and how glittery and all that sort of stuff right it, it just the, the story doesn't exactly land all the way through but you do at least appreciate just at least what Chazelle was trying to envision and how he tries to put it into sort of the the big screen which is like again a a, a dedication a you know an analysis of film history and cinema and just like appreciating kind of how things have changed and showing how like the changes are inevitable and how they're necessary and how sometimes there are some drawbacks that happen that are again it's just like you can't really you know it's not something that you can avoid and i think that that's i think chazelle does a great way of doing that in some cases and some other cuisine doesn't but 
that's just beside the point. That's just all I really have to say about, again, this feeling thing. Again, this is kind of my, I felt like I was really mixed about it. It wasn't the most, it wasn't the best film I've seen this year. I think, again, because of all the inconsistencies and just, again, just the runtime doesn't justify it as well as, you know, um, some of the actual writing kind of being a bit, you know, again, just a bit underwhelming. But having said that, I do applaud <laughs> Chazelle in the way that he dedicates his love for cinema and just doing so in a way that that really goes into one aspect of you know of, of the history of cinema and showing how things have changed and just showing it the cycle of it and again showing the message that again that, that this is sort of a thing that happens and this is the beauty of cinema in a way which is a really weird word to say but that's just how it is it's really bizarre but it works and there is a really good message behind it there's not a really good message but a really important message behind it and I think that he does land that, especially when you get to the end of the film and realize that, okay, well, that's what it is. This is what this film is. It's basically a dedication to cinema. Um, but it, it takes, a, it's like, you don't really get that, you know, revelation until you get to that end. And I think that's kind of where a lot of people like me kind of just feel like it, it does lead to sort of this unsatisfying experience just because if you had to get to the ending of the film to really get that, then that's kind of like, okay, well, I, I don't know how I, you know, it's just kind of like, I don't know how I feel about that. So yeah, that's all I really have to say about Babylon. If I were to kind of give like a rating for it, I'll probably give it like a 2.5. Um, I think the technicals are the best parts of the film. I mean, again, the cinematography is amazing. The visuals are great. The music is amazing. And um, again, the message, I think it does hit the message at least. And it does get to that. And I think I will applaud Chazelle for just being unique and trying to narrate that and trying to get that point across. But I think that when you do so, it does lead to some of the problems with the character development, the characters themselves. And that kind of becomes an issue with, you know, with trying to understand the characters and just trying to understand their journeys and not really getting to that main message until the end, until the end really tells you what this movie is about. But at least that doesn't take away the fact that the actors are the phenomenal job in this film i think everyone brad pitt margot robbie diego palva gene smart i mean they all did at least a great job in just you know really trying to illustrate this film and trying to get this up and uh doing so in a way that they can at least try their best to really execute what was you know given to them on the script and trying to manifest it on the big screen so, so yeah that's all i really have to say about babylon but yeah let me know what you think have you gone and seen babylon this past week weekend you know uh, you know dedicate your three hours just to see Babylon in theaters what are your thoughts about it what are your thoughts about the technical aspects what are your thoughts about this messaging itself do you agree that this is what you know Chazelle was trying to meet like this is what he thought this is what he envisioned to do for this film do you agree do you not agree what are your opinions about the end of the film as well as kind of just the overall film itself what are your opinions about the screenplay and the writing and just the execution of everything as well as performances um and yeah let me know what your thoughts are in general in the comments down below and yeah make sure to like and subscribe